Hi guys, this is Chris from Microsoft. In this chapter of What's New in Windows Server 2012, we're going to cover a little bit about Server Manager. I'm actually going to have two different sections on Server Manager. The first is going to be local management, and the second is going to be remote computer management. Uh, the Server Manager, which has actually been around for a little while, is uh, something that pops up when you first log in. If you're in Minshell, if you'll remember from a previous chapter, uh, this right here is, oh, it doesn't have a name yet. This is Contoso MS1 from a previous uh, change of the GUI. We made this Minshell, and you notice that uh, Server Manager pops up. Server Manager also starts immediately in Server with a GUI. It's not part of the um, Server Core. In Server Core, to do your out-of-box config, best way to do that is sconfig. sconfig gives you a set of menus where you can get the initial configuration of a server such as IP address, joining it to a domain, getting its firewall turned on and off, uh, uh, setting up the date and the time and other, other things like that. Since we're in Minshell, we actually have some GUI tasks we can do. And so I decided to use Minshell so we could see a mix of those, because just about everybody's gone through and done this on a, a, on a GUI type environment in the past so what I wanted to do here is I wanted to uh, kind of show a little bit of both when you when you look at server manager which has been popping up for versions of Windows going back quite some time now uh, most administrators I've noticed just close this thing out and then they go to all the different little places that you go to do an initial configuration on the server individually one at a time and you set up the server and that's great and all but what we uh, oh remove worlds and features wizards popping up because I just actually did a uh, uh, the server graphical shell removal on this virtual machine so it's finishing its little step of doing that anywho so uh, this is a neat place to go to get the server out of the box now we'll we'll talk about a lot of very powerful things that come along with server manager. Um, in, a, in another chapter of this or another episode of this series but what we're going to do today is configure the local server so configure the local server which is in giant orange little one step one type of thing here will take you to the local server navigation pane over here on the left the local server navigation pane has a, a quick list of all of the neat little things that you need to do to get your server up and running, such as changing the time zone, setting the time, um, decide if you want CEIP, do you want your Windows error reporting turned on, do you want to turn on or off the IA uh, Internet Explorer Enhanced Security Configuration. If this was a GUI, that would be there. We don't see Internet Explorer Enhanced Security Configuration here. Why? Well, again, because we're in Minshell. There is no Internet Explorer here. Uh, so links to all of those. Very common things that we have to do, obviously, with any new build of a computer, is we need to get the thing uh, joined to the domain. We need to give it a computer name. We need to give it an IP address that's relevant to that domain before we can get there. Now, notice that when I changed the name, I got a GUI, but when I clicked on change the IP address, I got sconfig. So it takes me here because there isn't a GUI option for that. So let me walk through setting up the um, IP configuration on this using Server Manager to launch sconfig or server config. So you can see this is option number eight is network settings. So I'll type in eight and hit enter. This really reminds me of back in the day of DOS. Any of you been in computer business long enough to have been <laughs> working with computers longer than Windows 3.11. You'll remember that we all worked in DOS once upon a time, and when we were doing that, we'd all create little batch files to launch all our favorite programs, right? And this kind of looks like that to me. Anyway, I want to pick con adapter number 10, hit enter. We have some pretty straightforward options like what is the network adapter address? We're going to say static in this case, S, and what is the address? 10.0.0, sorry, 1.0.0. I believe it is. I better check that real quick. I need to know. Oops, that's the wrong computer. I'm going to make sure that I have my little lab diagram correct for this. I'll pop up my little Visio here. It talks about all of the different virtual machines that we'll be using in these chapters coming forward. So this is the overall environment that we'll be using in the episodes on what's new in Windows Server 2012. So Contoso MS1 is 5 right here. Okay, so we'll, we'll talk about those other machines that are on that Visio in a moment. 
So I hit five. What's the subnet mass? Two five five two five five two five five dot zero, and the gateway is ten dot one dot o dot one, and then we have DNS servers. We need to be able to do uh, DNS resolution to a domain controller o dot and uh, looking at my Visio, I made the DC dot three. Otherwise, we can't. So blink, turn to the main menu, and exit. Now we need to change the computer name and the domain name. Now as of 08R2, we could actually do this in a one step. So I can go contoso.com and change this to contoso ms1 all at the same time. Now assuming that my DC is up and running, which hopefully I turned that on, look at Hyper-V, yeah, DC's running here, so we should we should be able to join the domain. Couldn't find it. Domain, make sure it's correctly typed. Hmm. We seem to have a issue here. So MS lookup. Can't find the DNS server. Oh no, oh, there he is. Ew.com. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. The domain controller for Katosa.com can't find Katosa.com. Let me fix that real fast. I'll jump back. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, layer one issue. So first thing I checked was is the DC even connected to here? So apparently when I imported these VMs, I had some issues. I need to check all of these actually and make sure that that's not the only one. Contoso, DC2 is connected to Contoso, MS1, let's just check him. He's on Contoso. So why is the DC not connected to Contoso? That's very interesting. It's going to be bad because there's some class uh, stuff happening this week in Dallas, even Sunday. I'm going to go down there and teach this workshop with these VMs. And <laughs> we'll have to put on the build spec to make sure that Contoso DC1 is actually there. Ah, now, we've, now we're doing that. So NS lookup. Make sure he's actually in there. Yup, yup, yup. Contoso.com. He found it. All right, so we should be able to join the domain now. Most all your Active Directory domain services issues that you're ever going to have are going to be DNS related SSW0RD got my super secure password password and welcome to the domain alright so we've done the whole joining the domain thing we've taken the changing of the IP addresses what else would be interesting inside of here the time zone note is a GUI that's kind of neat because we're in Minshell, right? But we do get the GUI interface for changing that, so we could change the the date and time, which clearly I need to do, and because it's not 1:07 p.m. And uh, we could go ahead and do some patch management stuff through Minshell or uh, through sconfig. We can turn remote desktop on or off from here, and turn the Windows firewall on or off from here as well. So lots of things that we can do for initial configuration. So what what would be very, uh, let me get in here, the properties, right? So I've got the firewall state, might want to, let's say in some situations, maybe turn that off. You know, we just joined it to a domain, so now we have a domain profile. So uh, depending on how you have your organization set up, that may or may not be something you want to do, but the neat thing is, and the most important point here, is that uh, most of your initial server configuration steps can be done right in here inside of Server Manager from a single point, regardless of whether you're in Minshell or server with a GUI. Um, once you have a fully configured server, you don't really need to touch it again, because you can then attach this server uh, to the server for management from another machine that has server manager on it. That's going to be the next episode. We're going to be talking about remote server management uh, from uh, from server manager in Windows Server 2012. 
So I'm going to go ahead and let this thing reboot, and I'll film the next uh, chapter and get that uploaded. So for now, this has been Chris with Microsoft, and as usual, I'd like to mention that this is not an official Microsoft uh, uh, video. This is just a project that I'm doing for myself, and it's not an official plan of record. So need uh, need to also let you know I've got a blog if you'd like to follow uh, me on my blog. There's a real easy website to remember. It's 9z.com. That's just the number 9, the letter z.com, uh, which you can uh, go out there and find my LinkedIn, my Facebook, and, and my uh, Twitter type uh, links from there. And, uh, if this video was useful to you in any way, please give it a like just so that it has a better chance of other people seeing it. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you.